Skin Flick, A Day Brandstetter Mystery, Book 5. Author, Joseph Hansen. Publisher, Open Road, Integrated Media. Narrator, Eric Ost. In memory of Dr. Dreadful, who left too soon. Chapter 16. The wig was different, and so was the costume. If costume wasn't an unfair word. The wig was brown with sunny streaks in it, and the dress was shirt maker beige, twill with agate colored buttons. The handbag lying on the bar matched, so did the big shoes, heels hooked over the braces of the bar stool. Nail polish and lipstick were red orange this time, but nothing was different about the smile. It said Dave was welcome, more than welcome. The sunlight was slivered by the bamboo blinds on the windows again. There were fewer agents and lawyers and clients in the room, and at the far end of it, no one fiddled with the musical instruments on the bandstand. Dave took the stool next to Randy's and looked at the drink he was holding. Margarita, Randy said. Will you? Das Equus, Dave told the coverall bartender. He said to Randy, So Odom lied. He does know Charlene. She never worked in any of his pictures, Randy said, but she was going to. Was, Dave said. The bottle came in a cold, wet glass. He changed his plans. Is. Then, Randy said, I only meant it hasn't happened. He's writing a script for her. He showed me her photo. I said, Why in God's name? And he said it was a favor for a friend. A photo? Dave said. Randy upended the handsome purse out. Came some cigarettes, lighter, lipstick, coins, a rattle of keys. The big male hand with the scrupulously female nails pushed a glossy snapshot along the bar at Dave. It looked as if it had been taken in a motel room. There was something wrong about the light. He wasn't sure what. She was naked, and she really did look 12 years old. The obscene pose was pathetic. He raised eyebrows at Randy. Uh, what friend? Jack Fulbright, Randy said. I think he took the picture. Odom parts easily with thanks to you, Dave said. Thanks and information? Randy licked salt off the edge of the margarita glass. We've been close. We still are. Every now and then he likes boys who dress up in women's clothes. I told you that. He's warm and funny and kind. And not everybody likes boys who dress up in women's clothes, Dave said. And all boys who dress up in women's clothes don't like fat, 50-ish pornographers. It's symbiosis, Randy said. He batted his false eyelashes at Dave and swallowed delicately from his drink. Is that the right word, or do I want exploitation? What's Fulbright doing for him? And Dave drank beer. He felt big, heavy, awkward. Every movie made seemed like an act, a fake. His voice sounded too deep. It couldn't be sad. He would never wanted to wear a dress. It had to be funny. He bit his lip to keep from laughing. Or had Fulbright already done this favor? He's going to let Spence have all the equipment he needs free, Randy said. What's funny? You make me feel like Jack Youngblood, Dave said. And who might that be? Randy tilted his head. A man who knocks people down on football fields. Randy shrugged. If you're butch, you're butch. He made his laugh giddy and patted his wig. But football is not my kind of contact sport. When you were playing your kind with Odom, Dave said, did he tell you why Fulbright wanted this favor? The margarita glass was empty. Randy pushed it to the back edge of the bar and lifted his chin to the bartender. I suppose to keep the girl happy, Randy peered at the snapshot. He turned it toward himself, though I honestly can't think why. I can't either, Dave said. He's got a different little package of female bones now. Probably has 20 a year, I'd bet on it. What kind of script? He's the one with the boat. Randy's new drink came with a neat frosting of salt around its rim. He took a ladylike sip and chose a cigarette and pushed the pack at Dave. Uh, boats are sexy. Dave lit the cigarettes with his manly, still lighter, grinning again. Randy said, The script. 
something about a schoolgirl and her dykey gym teacher and the gym teacher's horny boyfriend. Who knows? It sounds confused, Dave said. It'll be funny, Reggie said. That's why he can't make any money. The creeps that want to see sex movies don't want to laugh, and he keeps putting all these laughs in it. It's the only way he can stand making the things. His problem is, he's got too many brains. It's not brainy to lie, Dave said. He watched a scarecrow youth at the end of the bar pull music sheets out of an attache case and lay them in front of a plump man in a cardinal suit. No, I wouldn't give you a dollar for his brains and Fulbrights in one package. One very small package. He looked at his watch. How come you're not doing your Bertha the Sewing Machine Girl routine? Uh, because the immigration people are always rounding up the illegals and tossing them back over the fence, right? And it takes time for them to fix it up with the coyotes to get back in again, right? And Maury Steinberg's sweatshops gets very vacant during those periods. And however illegal Randy Van may be in however many ways, he, she, or it was born right here in the good old USA. Do you know Mitchell, South Dakota? No, but don't hum a few bars for me, Dave said. Funny, Randy Van said. Anyhow, when every other machine in the place is gathering dust, Randy's up there whipping out the new de blue jeans. So when I ask for time off, Maury never complains. He cocked a Johnny eyebrow at Dave and rocked his head. The hand that held the cigarette was bent far back at the wrist. And today I thought it would be fun to play Norna Charles. You know, Myrna Loy. Odom is going to hate you, Dave said. Why? He didn't hurt anybody, and you're not going to hurt him. But the frivolity was gone. Randy looked at Dave anxiously. You aren't, are you? Earlier today I'd have said no, Dave scowled at the brown bottle as he poured the last beer out of it. He shook his head, drank some of the beer. Now I wonder, he looked gravely into the chorus boy's face with its thick coat of makeup. That's what it means to be Nick Charles. The case makes perfect sense at noon. And by one o'clock, it makes no sense at all. But one thing I am sure of, this little girl, he tapped the murky photograph, was in the middle of it, and still is, alive or dead. Dead? Randy forgot about his voice. It came out baritone. He cleared his throat and said, Dead? Again, up an octave. Maybe, maybe not. You were in Spence Odom's living quarters, am I right? Any signs of her there? Randy laughed. His living quarters are half wardrobe department, half prop room. Also, carpenter shop. Also, film editing. Also, projection room. It's pure chaos. You could hide an elephant there. I didn't see any sign of her. No, I can't picture Spence hiding a girl. Not a real, honest-to-God girl. Why would he? Why would he lie to me and say he never heard of her? Dave picked up the margarita glass and put it into Randy's hand. Was he with you when Herman Ludwig was shot? Of course, I told you. Spence was the one who sent me to find him. Randy gulped the rest of the margarita and set the glass down. You don't think Spence killed him? He began shoving the junk back into the handbag. Spence couldn't step on a bug. He'd have nightmares of guilt. Waking and sleeping. He wouldn't be able to eat. Wouldn't be able to face people. You don't know him. He's very sensitive. Randy worked the catch on the handbag flap. He can't even bear to hurt people's feelings. Pick up a gun and kill a human being. Even somebody he hated, he couldn't do that too. And he was crazy about Herman. He's got a streak someplace that isn't nice, Dave said. What about the man with his throat slit in the barber's chair? That's a dummy, a joke. Somebody's hiding her, Dave got off the stool. Let's go see whether he can tell the truth today. He's out in the van doing location stuff, Randy said. That's why I've got this time. I'm not in any outdoor shots. The makeup makes me sweat too much. My identity runs. He'll be back when it gets dark. Dave didn't hear Randy's answer because Middlenacht came in at the sunbright door. Outside it, the same sun-tanned youngsters were eating fancy burgers in the polluted heat. The same Peter Frampton record was yelling at them. Metal knock wore black glasses, a tank top, dyed a dozen runny colors, covered his skinny torso. 
that slept in black jeans were the same. Today they were tucked into black cowboy boots. He headed for the black bandstand in the corner and Dave said to Randy, Excuse me a minute, slid the photograph off the bar and went after Metal Knocked. He caught up with him between empty tables. Metal Knock took off the black glasses. His hair was lank. He smelled a baby oil shampoo. It's you, he said. What's this? You tell me, Dave said. It's supposed to be Charlene. It is, only where'd you get it? Wow. His tone and the little brief smile that went with it were marveling. What the fuck was she into? You know what this is, man. I don't understand the question, Dave said. Some private eye, Metal Knock said. Dave took the photo back from him and studied it. Infrared, he said. Only, to what point? Why would she pose in the dark? Was she shy? Hell, she loved having her picture taken and was a drag. Go to the beach. She'd spend 20 bucks and half a day in those take-your-own-portrait booths. Not this kind of portrait, Dave said. I've got some like that on Polaroid. It's got a gizmo so we could appear together. Fully clothed, no doubt, Dave said, metal knocked, grinned. Bare ass and banging. Somebody was with her, Dave said. There have to be more of these pictures. A whole set. And in the rest, she's not alone. It was a setup. A dark motel room. Just her. And some unsuspecting man. And a hidden photographer. He looked at Metal Knocked. I hope you hung on to those Polaroids. Black Bale? Metal Knocked looked sober. I'll get them back before I do a record that hits the charts. You bet your ass I will. His forehead wrinkled. You didn't find her yet. That Odom character didn't know where she was. He didn't say so, Dave said. But I'm going to ask him. Again tonight. If I find her, I'll try to get your pictures back for you. And what's going on? Randy came to them. Metal Knock looked him up and down, doubtfully. Dave said, Metal Knock, Randy Van. They made indifferent noises. Metal Knock said to Dave, You really think she's alive? Nobody's proved otherwise, Dave said. And I need her to answer questions. If I can't find her, a boy that killed his own father is going to get away with it, and a man that never hurt anyone is going to end up on death row. So I have to believe she's alive, don't I? He turned to Randy. Do you like to ride horses? Have they got side saddles? Randy asked. Probably not. You can change. We'll stop by your place. I love the stopping by my place ideal, Randy said, but not to change. I don't look right in britches. You never know till you try, Dave said. Ah, the hell with it. We'll stop at a supermarket instead. What for? Randy asked. Apples. If you won't exercise them, you can feed them, all right? He lifted a hand to Metal Knocked. Don't forget, if you see her, phone me. Metal Knocked wasn't listening. He was staring hard at Randy. He said to Dave, I don't think that's a girl. How oh, hum, Randy said. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks. I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold. To offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.